Hey y'all, so this video I'm going to make into two parts, but essentially what we're aiming to do is to add a particle effect to a foot step inside of an environment. I'm thinking something like water splashing, something simple, but the idea is that we need to trigger that through checking for if the foot area has collided with the ground. So the first video that we're going to do, which is this one, is essentially doing a trigger event collision check for if a foot or if an object really in general collides with another object. So we're gonna walk through a little bit of basic C sharp. The reason that I'm covering this, despite this being more of an artist's 3D channel, uh, is just because this is one of those bread and butter scripts that you really just need to know. Uh, if you're gonna implement different types of animations or particle effects or trigger volumes, enabling or disabling things in the scene. A lot of it ties back into just this simple few lines of script. So without further ado, I'm going to launch the high definition 3D sample template. Uh, that's mainly for the second video that I'll be making, but for all intents and purposes, it really doesn't matter uh, which render pipeline you're in. I'm also going to be in the most recent version of Unity 6.1 in the alpha, just because why not? So I'm going to go ahead and create a project and I'm going to call this uh, trigger splash because we want to create a small splash in video number two. So let's go ahead and hit create and I'll see you when the project opens. All right, so we just opened up the project. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of any of the wizard type setup stuff. This is the scene that we're going to come back into, but what I want to do first is actually open up a brand new scene and just make it something simple. Let's just say it's the basic outdoor HDRP. Why not? And once we're in here, I then want to work through our trigger logic. I'm going to hit game object, 3D object, and create a cube. And let's say this cube is, we'll call it the trigger. And over here, I'm going to check on that it is the trigger. I'm also just for the sake of ease of viewing, I'm going to put on a new material and call this the trigger material. And I'm going to make this, let's just say red. Then I want to create a, let's just say it's a sphere. And this sphere is essentially what you could think of as our player or our person or an animated object that passes into this area. Um, I've seen some cool tutorials on things like key cards and whatnot that go into a collision area. All it is is something that's moving through space. So in knowing that, uh, I want this sphere to collide with this box and do something. And what I think I wanna do, just because I love particle effects and because our video two will be in particle effects, is I wanna come over and do visual effects, open up the visual effect graph, and see that we have a default VFX graph template and knowing that we want to do something like a splash, I'm going to do a simple burst and hit create. We'll call this splash. And then I want to drag the splash up here into the scene and make sure that it is animating on top of this sphere. That looks good enough for me for right now. So right now it's just playing on repeat because that's how the particle system works is that it just continues looping for now. Uh, it also begins playing on play. What I wanna do is make sure that this moves with the sphere. So you can imagine if I have this move with a character who's walking and I want this to splash where their feet are, uh, it would operate in a similar fashion and that we would want it in the hierarchy of the person. Now what we wanna do is basically check for when this is going to be colliding with this trigger. And I wish that there was something more simple, but from what I have seen and what I've experienced over the years, really just writing a script uh, is probably the way to go. So I'm gonna call this trigger event. 
And then we're going to open up our C sharp. And from within here, I essentially want to get rid of void start and void update. Uh, with this being more of an art leaning YouTube channel, uh, I won't go too deep into it. If y'all do want a video more on the basics of C sharp, we can get into that. But basically what this is saying is this starts when the executable fires up or when the scene fires up, uh, the update is something that is called every frame. So it's like a constantly checked thing, which we don't want. And now I'm going to delete those two things out. And the public class trigger event mono behavior is exactly what we want. From here, I want to create one public. And I believe I'm about to use a unity event, which may not have anything tied to it until we have using the event system. So I'm gonna go up to the top here underneath using unity engine. I'm going to say using unity engine dot events semicolon. Then I'm going to come back down here and go to unity event. And it can be called anything. Um, I'll just call it, let's do you event. That'll work. Then I want to create a public game object. And I'll call this the trigger object. So basically what we're doing is declaring two variables. One of them is going to be a public event of what happens. And then the other one is a public game object that is the object causing the trigger to trigger. Underneath that, I then want to do a pretty simple public void on trigger enter. We can just do collider, collider, collider. That works. All right, so then I want to use the braces here to then say if collider dot game object equals trigger object, then we want to invoke our event which is this u event. So I'm gonna do u event dot invoke parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon. I'm gonna hit control S, save that out. And now that we're back in the scene, I'm gonna come on into my trigger. I'm gonna drag the trigger event over here onto it. Now, just to scroll down to make sure that y'all can see this above my video, we now have a trigger event script here. So this has a U event, which is my unity event that I want to be triggering. And then we have a trigger object. So what we want to have happen, and I've disabled splash as a heads up just because I want it to start off. Um, what we want to happen is that whenever we enter with the sphere into the trigger. So I've just dragged sphere over here into the trigger object. We want an event to happen with the splash, which is my VFX. And I want to just do a simple game object set active. Now, I also need to toggle this on because it's a Boolean. So basically what this is saying is once it detects that the sphere has collided with the cube, then it will enable the splash. Now there is one more thing that we are missing, and this is critical, and it will not work without it, is that you must have a rigid body on the item that's going through the collider. So I need to go into add component, and just to show you what happens if you don't, I'm gonna hit play, over into my scene, drag this over here, and nothing happens. You can even see the object is still disabled. Then I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to add a rigid body. And now that we have that on there, I'm going to hit play. Come back over to my scene. 
and now you can see when it collides, now it's going to start that animation. Uh, I am also going to turn off use gravity so it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't fall and hit the ground immediately, and I can just move it laterally instead of needing to worry about its height. So let's go over to scene, drag it through, and now we have it properly activating. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me pop the script that I just wrote up here so that you can get a good look at it. And please let me know if you have any questions, more than happy to answer them. Hopefully this gets you what you needed. Uh, so I, I use this type of stuff as a conclusion in things like activating particle effects in things like changing Cinemachine cameras, uh, which I can do a tutorial on that as well among other things. So please check it out. If you haven't used this before, try it out. Very simple. Uh, some of the programmers watching this are probably thinking that this is uh, programming 101 stuff, and I'm not saying it's not. Uh, it just might not be readily uh, available knowledge to all of the 3D artists out there kind of working with the engine. So Make sure you come back for the video too, where we implement this and fine tune the particle effect into something that looks like a water splash coming up from a footstep on a, a puddle or a, a wet floor. And we'll be doing that inside of that HDRP template scene that we originally started in. So I hope to see you all there. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know what else you all want to see. Like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.